All right. Good night. Or good night. Good evening, everyone. Whoa, we weren't, we're not trying to get rid of y'all just yet. Um, I am Christy Peterson from Vintage Books. And tonight we have Cindy Goyette with us. Her brand new book, um, Obey All Laws, just came out last week. Um, so we're really excited to talk with her. Now, we didn't find out about till Cindy's book until relatively um, short amount of time before it came out. So we haven't had a chance to to um, talk about it too much on the website yet. But you, I believe there's been uh, one ad about the fact that you were going to be here tonight. And her books are on their way to us. And as soon as they uh, arrive, uh, we're going to have her come in and sign them. And, I, and I'll post um, to let everybody know that they are in. So if you listen to the interview tonight and go, oh, yes, I definitely want to read that. Um, we will keep you posted on when we actually get our copies. So first of all, hi, Cindy. It's really nice to have hi. you. And um, Thank you. I would love for you to just give people a short sort of summary without giving any of the juicy stuff away. Uh, uh, just people, let people know a little bit about what the book's about. Well, it takes place in Phoenix, where I lived for a long time. And the protagonist is uh, Casey Carson, and she's a probation officer, um, which I also was in, for a long time. <laughs> and um, it starts out where Casey um, actually runs in. Uh, yeah, we do field visits, home visits as probation officers, POs. And um, she goes to her first one, and it goes horribly wrong. And uh, she encounters a one-eyed, badass, angry gangster and uh, has to like save herself from him. And then a short while later, she's doing home visits and she's on the radio, which is what you do. And she hears that her cousin, Hope, who's also a probation officer, is out doing home visits. And she's kind of listening to the radio broadcast. And all of a sudden she hears that her cousin, Hope, is not responding to the, the dispatchers asking, where, where are you? Are you OK? And she's not responding. So Casey goes to that location and finds out that her cousin is missing. She's been abducted during her home visit. And that sets off a whole bunch of problems <laughs> for Casey and her cousin. Yeah, yeah. So um, how, so you mentioned that you were a probation officer. So that connection is fairly obvious. But <laughs> what made you decide to take your personal experiences um, and start writing about them. I'm always curious what what that journey is like. What makes people um, what makes you compelled to write something um, versus just you know share it with family or whatever? Like to, because the writing process is you know it's a very different exercise and it's hard and it's a little bit lonely because you're kind of by yourself for a good chunk of it before it starts to go out to edits and i'm always curious what drives people to make that choice well i have been dabbling with writing and writing some i guess you would call it literary fiction that went nowhere um i don't you know discount those books because they helped me get to where i am yeah, um, yeah. but they weren't really working and I, you know, was a, a probation officer at the time. Um, I actually started writing this um, about 27 years ago. Um, this character, I, you know, took years and years off for not writing it. And this version is completely different. But I started playing with this character back then. And it was, you know, it was what I was living. And yeah. when yeah. I started this, um, Casey was in her 30s in the book. I was in my 30s at the time, um, obviously not anymore. <laughs> um, time has marched on. Um, but I I never saw books with probation officers. Like they're in books, they're in movies yeah, yeah. as a side character. But as the main character, I can only think of two that I've seen in my lifetime. And they were totally different, what this is. Um, so people don't understand what probation officers do. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to bring that to the forefront. Um, and what better job? Like you deal with criminals constantly. There's so much material. Um, I wish I would have kept a notebook of all the yeah. <laughs> to me because, you know, 
I, I don't remember them all, but I mean, um, nothing in this book is real, but it's based on reality. Yeah. Yeah. So remix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you find that writing, oh, what's the, what's the good way to work it? Like, does it kind of help you, um, work through because that's got to be a really tough job a lot of the time and like you said it's not a job that people are it that's really in the limelight or people appreciate and stuff um does this book kind of help hopefully bring appreciation to the to the role more um and let people kind of know so yeah yeah i mean I think like most people who are in law enforcement, you try to find humor in situations because if you don't, yeah. it'll kill you. You know, there's yeah. so many just sad stories out there right. and the right. um, vicarious trauma is a real thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, the book is light. I mean, yeah. it deals with yeah. a very awful subject, <laughs> but it's, it's a light view of it because that's how yeah. I've always viewed the job. You know, we always laughed about things, you know, we'd come back and, oh my god can you believe what this guy said you know yeah what you have drugs in your pants well they're not my pants you know <laughs> yeah yeah so um I, I tried to capture a lot of that but I think it probably was a little cathartic um, writing yeah, it. Yeah. um just because I think in, unless you're really close to me you don't know what I do and I I've had people that have read it now say to me oh my god I had no idea what you did yeah, for a living yeah like, I knew what your job was, but I had no idea. Right, right. Well, and I would imagine that it's a job that you can't just go out and talk about in any great detail with people because I would imagine that a lot of what you're dealing with is confidential. And so, yeah. Why a mystery? I mean, I, I suppose in some ways it's kind of an obvious, it seems like an obvious question, but what made you, you said you dabbled in literary fiction um, what made you ultimately sort of settle in sort of the mystery thriller genre um, to tell these stories? Probably because that's what I like to read, although I read literary fiction as well. But, you know, this sounds like a cop out, but honestly, it wrote itself. Yeah, um, yeah. I, you know, I, I always say like, I'm like a meeting and it comes out of my fingers. People say you should dictate. I'm like, I can't. My, all my words come out of my fingers. They don't come out of my brain. Or yeah, my mouth, yeah. You know? So it kind of just happened. Um, yeah. I didn't set out. I didn't say I'm going to write a mystery. I just started writing about Casey and it, you know, yeah, yeah. came a mystery. Yeah. Do you, um, that kind of jumps into another question that I often ask writers just because I think it's interesting how many different answers I get, but are you uh, more of a writer that plans ahead of time or is it sounds like maybe not, maybe you just kind of <laughs> let it come out and then figure out later, like what order it's supposed to go in and stuff. Yeah. I'm a panster for sure. Like I have no idea what's yeah, happening. Yeah. I don't know who the killer is. I don't know any of that thing, you know, stuff, but it's, it's funny because I have a, a three book um, contract with Level Best Books for this series. And for the third one, which I'm working on now, I'm, you know, I've kind of got know what's going to happen. And it's hard for me to write. Yeah. So much harder than when I just yeah. wing it. Yeah. So I'm yeah. not sure I can ever become an outliner. <laughs> yeah. No. And I think that that's interesting because, you know, we spend so much time as writers talking about like our first book and, you know, where we finally broke through and we finally made a sale and how hard it was and everything. But I think sometimes it's actually harder later for a variety of reasons. One of which is you're writing usually to tighter deadlines, but another one is, yeah, you, I would think particularly with mystery, like, you know, the first one, usually the first one is fairly well fleshed out before you start shopping it around. But if you get a multi big and multi book deal, like a lot of mystery writers do, then yeah, you've got it like, Oh dear. Now I have to do this again. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it is terrifying. And, and uh, it's hard to explain to people because, you know, I mean, it comes on the back of something really, really good. You sold the book and it's so exciting and it, and it is, but, but uh, I don't think I've ever sat down and write a, wrote a book and not, not been 
had the feeling of, oh my gosh, do I remember how to do this? <laughs> I'd maybe I don't remember how to, what if I don't remember how to do this? <laughs> so, exactly. And you do, but you just kind of have to trust that you, that you do. So it sounds like obviously two more books coming out. Um, do you have a timeline for those yet? I do. The second one is January of next year. And then the third, the following January. So okay. the second one's that. pretty much done. Like I still have to do some edits, but I mean, at least. Yeah. Yeah. It's like on draft four. So that's good. Yeah. But when that's I think great. about how many drafts I had with this one, I've had like hundreds. So yeah, no. Wait. Yeah. That's <laughs> definitely a reality. I think for the subsequent books is You've done it once, so there is some familiar territory there, but yeah, you're definitely working on more constricted timelines. Did you find this, you, you know, you said the third one's been being a little bit of a bear because you actually know what's going to happen and what the heck. <laughs> Did you find the second one? <coughs> was difficult for different reasons because of the shorter timeline or did that one pretty much jump out of your fingers too? Well, I started that before I sold book one. The first one. Okay. So I already had like a good grasp on what was happening. Yeah. So it, it was like, once I get going, I'm usually okay. It's yeah. just yeah. ongoing. Yeah, um, so I feel pretty good about book two. And that, I'm really excited about book three, actually. I think it's going to be. Good. Best oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> if that's I can awesome. ever write it. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you will. You will. <laughs> but yeah, I understand that feeling. So what tell us a little bit about um without getting the giving too much away about the book what is the process of um the things that Casey does in the book the probation officer's job um it sounds like you have her going out on her very first call so it sounds like she's new um is that is that a job that you like intern or shadow or something for a while before you actually go out on your own? Uh, no. And actually she's not new. She's been there like six or seven years. Um, so no, it's, it's more just being a probation officer is different in that you're a cheerleader one minute and uh, you're arresting them the next. Yeah. And um, one of the things that I found hard, and I'm kind of deviating from your question here. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Go but, ahead. Um, so I I was a probation officer in uh, Arizona for 17 years. And I retired because we had 20 year retirement there. I bought some time back that it does make sense mathematically. <laughs> um, and then I, I, I moved up here and I became a probation parole officer in Multnomah County. And so it was hard for me to keep it straight because the rules are very different and how you do the job. Yeah. Um, so I had to, I actually have a friend who's um, reading all my stuff who's still in Arizona and I make sure she reads it for accuracy because it's so different. Yeah. But um, so, so a PO does, and I've, I've written an article on my website, a blog. Okay. Was, um, it bothers me that people don't know what a PO does. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's one of those things that you don't actually think about because it we're we're so focused on the beginning stage in the criminal justice system, you know, catching the bad guys and the the court processes and stuff, and that's where most of the popular TV and stuff that does focuses on that we don't really think about what how does someone transition back out and how does that all work, so. Yeah. Basically, you're holding them accountable and they have a list of conditions that they have to comply with. And your job as a PO is to make sure they do. They rarely do. <laughs> um, these are people who have issues and sometimes, yeah. you know, yeah. it's a big ask to have them, you know, like you have a drug problem and suddenly like, oh, you're not allowed to use drugs. Well, that never works. Right. You have to. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a process. It's it, it's, you know, people continue to use and on probation and that and. And so you can't expect people to be perfect right away, but you hope the end goal is that they become a better person at the, the end yeah, and yeah. don't come back. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a totally different job. And and I just, I don't know. I hope that people get something from it. I think book two goes more into what a PO does than book one. Book one, she kind of gets swept away in the, yeah. the, and that. So she doesn't really show that much what they do, but book two, has a lot more of that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, that'll be fun. I'm I'm excited for you and I'm excited for the the angle, I guess, the the uh the hook of of a different part of the system that most people don't know a whole lot about. Um when you um as a pantser, because a lot of the mystery writers I talk to are plotters and they they kind of like they know who the bad guy is at the beginning and they're planning out, you know, how is it, how are they going to get from point A to point B to point C and how, you know, what are the red herrings going to be? Where, how does that process work for you? If you're, if you're sort of doing a little bit more of, I'll call it free, right? Just in the, in the sense that you're kind of letting it flow like does that process of organizing everything and making sure everything's there like how does that work for you as somebody who's who's pantsing instead of plotting well it's funny i think i know deep inside what's happening because yeah yeah when i get to the end i'm like oh, oh that's the killer and then i look back and there's always clues along the way that yeah, i didn't know yeah. i was printing. so some of it just is organic i guess i i don't know it just happens um, but I do have to go back and, and put stuff in, um, like there's a whole subplot in book one that I edit later, like, yeah, had no yeah. Idea. um, and you know, it evolves, but I think somehow I always knew yeah. I just didn't tell yeah. myself. <laughs> it's all, it's there. And I think that's, what's so fascinating about talking about talking to so many writers is, in in a sense, all the same things happened, but for each person's brain, it works a little bit differently. And so they happen in a different order. And some people like all that planning, they've got to do up front or they don't feel confident to jump in. And other people are like, no, I can't do that because that would slow me down. I've got to just write the thing and then come back and and you know make sure all the pieces are there. And it's just very fun for me to see how everybody gets to you know this beautiful completed book with all the organization and and everything in the end but we all get there in a in a bit of a different way how does it um how does it work for you when you're doing a writing say you're first drafting a book like it sounds like maybe you are for book three um the other thing that i was curious about is um people's writing life in the sense of you know, do you have to follow for you, for yourself? Do you have to follow the old adage of write every day? Or do you find that you like have office hours or do you find it easier just to sort of jump in whenever? Like, how does that work for you? It works best when I say I'm going to write from like, you know, nine to 12 every day. However, I haven't been doing that for a couple of months. <laughs> yeah. It's just been so bad. I think yeah. I've just been so excited about the book coming out and yeah, yeah. focused on that and um, book two and that, that I just can't sit down on a regular basis. I yeah. did write this morning. It was a great thing. Yay. Good. <laughs> I've gone days without writing lately and, and that's not good. I really need to write almost every day, at least yeah, during the week. I, I retired recently so um you know i i have an open schedule which i think almost makes it worse because yeah, when i had time. limited time i would you know make sure i got my writing time and now it's like well i can do it whenever <laughs> yeah yeah that's different it is a different um it's a little bit disorienting i had the same thing when the kids went off to college it was like oh okay and having all this unstructured time is actually not necessarily the blessing that you think it's going to be. So. Um, <laughs> but enough. yeah, no, I understand. But for you, it works to write better to do it consistently instead of like a big creative like rush. Right. And every week I say, OK, I'm going to start this week. And so yeah, far, yeah. it's not taking hold. But do you find that that gets easier, though, once you are kind of into it and you kind of know where you're where you're going I think okay. I'm starting to hit that point on book three because I'm starting to get excited about it good but. good yeah yeah and do you have other genres that you have you said you'd written literary fiction is that something you think you'll ever get back to or or do you think this is like your thing and you're going and it's good 
the literary fiction probably will stay in the closet where it belongs and, and <laughs> never get at it. Um, I did write a suspense um, that I'm trying to find a home for right now. I'm uh, kind of submitting that to agents right now. I, I don't have an agent right now. I used to have an agent and she suggested I write a cozy. Um, so I did. <laughs> and that's also um, out on submission right now, trying to find a home. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm hoping to actually get that series out there too. Um, yeah. And the suspense. But I think after that, I'm kind of like just going to have to stick with those three. Yeah. Things. Yeah. It's too much. No, I think we all find, we all find where we just the kind of land. And um, for those of you who aren't, um, you know, the, the casually throwing the agent thing around, um, it's actually not unusual for writers to have more than one agent in their writing life um, or have an agent and maybe it doesn't work out. That's pretty, that's pretty common. I think it's just because an agent works for you and sometimes it just doesn't click or sometimes they only represent one genre. Um, and if you write a different genre, then they don't represent that. So you've got to find somebody different. So that the whole, the whole agent thing is um, it's, it's always funny to me because it's, it feels different uh, for writers than, you know, like a movie star talks about their agent or a sports star or something. And um it always sounds a little bit pretentious, but in the writing world, it really isn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, but it uh, it kind of it kind of sounds a little bit like that when we when we write about it. I think to sometimes for, to people from the outside world, but basically, an agent is just a person that um, shops your book around. Um, most publishing houses are closed to submissions unless you have an agent. Um, like the agent has to be the one to submit something, not not you personally. Um, and that's not a hundred percent true, but for a lot of houses it is. So that's why writers go find agents. <laughs> it's not because they're going to make millions of dollars or anything like that. <laughs> so well, that's probably never going to happen. <laughs> no, no. Okay. I think that's another thing that people don't always realize is that um, selling work or getting a book deal um, very rarely means means like big money. We, you know, we think of the Rick Riordan's and the J.K. Rowling's and the, you know, Lee Childs and all the James Patterson and all the really big name authors. And those are people who have made a lot of money with books, but um, the vast majority of writers don't. The vast majority of writers have second jobs <laughs> or are, you know, retired and, and, or whatever, um, because it is not a lucrative thing. We do it because we love it and not because <laughs> we're going to get rich, but <laughs> But we could. It could happen. It could, <laughs> yes. Doubtful, yeah. but it could. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's fun to talk to people, just different people, because I think ultimately it's just the feeling of having your work out there and have other people read it and enjoy it is just, that's the magical part of it. Um, yeah, you know, I'm getting it's really lovely to have, you know, your book sell a million copies and have it turn into a movie deal. And that would be awesome. But but even just like one person reading it and getting excited about it is pretty cool. So <laughs> I've only gotten, you know, a handful of reviews so far, but it's like, oh my God, they can hear the imaginary voices in my head. That's amazing. Yes, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it? What did it, what, do you remember reading your very first review and just how that, what, what is that, what was that like for you? Yeah. I, I mean, especially, you know, the ones who I don't know who these people are. It's just, it's so satisfying. It's the, it's yeah. the biggest thrill I think I've had for a long yeah. time because it's yeah. like, yeah. wow, they got it. And they're talking about my characters, like they're people and they're fictional, Yeah, <laughs> but you know, they're, they're, they get it. And it, yeah. it's, it's the biggest thrill I've had yeah. this yeah. process so far. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've had that happen a couple of times, not so much reviews for, because I do work for hire for kids but you know like having teachers or something share that a kid really responded to a book or really liked it and it's like right. yeah okay I'm good my work here's done <laughs> that's all I needed I'm good <laughs> so that's I also cool. know I probably shouldn't read them anymore because you know yeah eventually yeah. You get 
Yeah. It's interesting because I find that um, sometimes they're, they're, you know, they're right. You know, that, you know, you read them and you're like, okay, yeah, I can agree with that. Like this, this was a weakness or this was something that I really struggled with. And, um, but sometimes people go out of their way to be unkind and that's not great, not a great feeling. <laughs> so, yeah, so far so good, but I know that's coming because it happens. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So you are working on book three. Do you have stuff that you are working that you're kind of thinking in your head for the next thing you're going to work on? Or are you just mostly focused on trying to get book three out the door? Well, like I said before, book three, but I'm also hoping the cozy and the suspense, um, you know, gets out there somehow. Um, it's just, it's, it's a hard business. It's just yes, it you know, is. It is very much. possible. And I feel just, like I need to savor this moment and be yeah. thankful for where I am yeah. because um, I have a friend who's um, a lot further along than me. And I kept telling her, I just want to be where you are. I just want to be where you are. Yeah. Yeah. But once you're there, you're going to want more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. that's true. But um, even if, you know, this is my heart book and yeah. I want it. Like I said, I started this like 27 years ago with this character and I've just wanted to share her with the world and that people are being a good, you know, response to it just means the world to me. And I'm going to try to just stay in this moment for a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. No, I love that because it is, it's something that you put your heart into and you don't know. I mean, as a writer, you don't know if it's ever going to get out there. And so that's great. Really hard Yay. <laughs> And I think that's the other reason why, I mean, I get to interview all the writers and um, it's fun because for me having, being like on both sides of it, you know, being a writer, but also being the bookseller and, and working with other authors, um, you get to the point where somebody else like getting a book deal or somebody else finally getting their book out there is like just as exciting for you as your own book because you see the journey they took and it's so exciting to see it finally come to the writing community, and, and, the writing community yeah. is so supportive yeah. i yeah. just i you know and, and like I, I i don't know where i got the guts but i just emailed lee goldberg and i said would you do a blurb for my book i don't know lee goldberg and he did oh yay yeah <laughs> that's awesome on the cover when the book comes out and I mean, yeah. So things like that, those are moments, you know, you just yeah. can't get over. <laughs> yeah. Yay. That's really cool. Well, it has been so great to talk to you. I'm so excited for you. Um, like I said, everybody, we will definitely let you know when those copies are coming in. I know they're, they're like en route now. So, so we did get confirmation that the order went out and they're coming and we'll have Cindy come in and and uh, sign them for us and put out on the on the social media that they're here and you can come and get them. Um, the other things that I want to remind people about, the uh, books for the Cozy Mystery and the Magical Mystery Book Club, um, those have been selected for February and I'm going to be getting those up on social media, hopefully tomorrow, um, as long as the ice doesn't, you know, ice me in for the whole day. I suspect I'll be able to get into the office uh, somewhere in the midday. So we'll get that up there. Um, the uh, Let's see. Paula Charles, who is another local mystery book, is going to be our guest next week on Vintage Books Live. And then we're super excited to have our first um, in-person event. Uh, last Saturday in January, it's going to be David D. Levine, who is a local sci-fi uh, author, who we interviewed last week. If you want to go pick up that that, that interview and then come and see David, um, we're very excited to have him live in the store to kick off the year. So all the things coming up um, and then obviously just normal um, come and see us at the store. And if you want to trade books in or whatever, you can do that. So we're always happy to see everybody in the store as well. So thank you again, Cindy. Um, thank you for having me. Big good luck and lots of sales for the first book coming out. And um, 
just, I hope you have a great week. Thank you. You too.